Welcome to Electron Line, and here's a very interesting problem for us to solve in a graphical method. Here we had, uh, back in 1865, Jules Verne, famous author, the, he's mostly known for the 20,000 leaks under the sea, but also for the attempt to shoot a space capsule to the moon using a cannon. That would require an acceleration from zero to a speed of 11 kilometers per second, which is 11,000 meters per second, over the distance, the length of the cannon. Let's say the length of the cannon was 220 meters, and people in the capsule here being shot through the barrel of the cannon would have to reach a speed from zero to 11 kilometers per second over that distance. The question now is, what was the acceleration of the people in the capsule, and was that even realistic? All right, let's try and figure that out. Again, we're going to see here, we have uh, the change in velocity, we have the distance. I think I'm going to graph a velocity versus time graph. So here we have velocity, here we have time. We start from zero and we go up to 11,000 meters per second. In a certain amount of time, I don't know what the time is, but I do know that the area underneath the curve is the distance traveled during that time. So in this case, let me put the time over here. So the time is unknown, but I know that the area here, the area represents the distance traveled during that acceleration, which means that it equals 220 meters. Also realize that the slope of this graph, the slope of the velocity versus time graph represents acceleration. So let's write that down. So the slope equals the acceleration, which is what we're trying to find. So the first thing is we're going to find the time using the area, and then you, we're going to use the find the acceleration using the slope of this graph. So note that the area of this triangle is equal to one half the base times the height. So in this case, the area, which is 220 meters, is equal to one half times the base, which would be the time elapsed, which we need to know to find the acceleration, times the height, and that would be from zero to 11,000 meters. That would be 11 thousand meters per second. All right, putting the two over there and dividing by 11,000, we can say that the time is equal to two times 220 divided by 11,000. And that would be the time in seconds that it took for the capsule to leave the cannon to travel the distance of the barrel. So 440 divided by 11,000, and we get a time of 0 0.04 seconds Wow, four one hundredths of a second to travel 220 meters. That seems like a bit much. Now that we have the time, so the time is equal to 0 0.04 seconds. Now to find the acceleration, that's equal to the slope. And the slope is equal to the rise divided by the run. And of course the rise would be 11,000 meters per second going from 0 to 11,000 meters per second, and the run would be 0 0.4 seconds. So we take uh, 11,000, divide by 0 0.04, and we get an acceleration of 275,000 meters per second, squared, of course, per second squared. That's a very high acceleration. Now, realizing that people can only withstand a maximum of 20 Gs for a very short period of time, let's convert that to Gs and see what would happen. So multiply this times the, the ratio, Gs at the top, meters per second squared at the bottom. One G is 9.8 meters per second squared. So divide this by 9.8. And so we get a total of 28,061 g's which is way more than 20 so even though from a um, artistic or from a novel perspective it was a great idea to shoot people to the moon using a cannon but unfortunately even if you could muster the amount of energy required to shoot a capsule up to 11 kilometers per second over distance 220 meters the people in the capsule would not survive that enormous acceleration but bottom line Using graphical methods, it's very easy to graphically represent in a V versus T graph the motion that's happening. We go from 0 to 11,000 meters per second over a certain period of time. We didn't know what it was. We realized the area underneath the curve was equal to the distance traveled. Then we said the area would be equal to one half the base times the height. The base is the time. The height is the speed gained. 
11,000 meters per second, allows us to solve for time, and then realizing that the slope represents acceleration, rise over run, change in the velocity divided by the time, gives us acceleration. So graphical methods give you a very good way, very good method to graphically represent the problem and even solve for the answers. So I'll show you some, some more examples. Actually, in some cases, the graphical method is the only method to solve it because trying to do it using the equations is so difficult and so confusing. The graphical method in some cases is actually really easy. So stay tuned if you like this. I'll show you some more examples.